You're funny, Chandler. You're a funny guy. You know what else is really funny? Something else I might have said? Every generation has iconic TV shows that just feel like they're part of your life. And the apartments and stores and workplaces from those shows become as familiar to us as our own homes. In the new book, Neil Fisher gives a historical tour of those shows through their floor plans, props, and overall design. Behind the scenes, illustrated floor plans and scenes from the best TV shows of all time. And Neil joins us this morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Good to see you, too. All right. Let's, uh, our first one is I Love Lucy. Now, what does the floor plan have to do with what you're communicating here? What? Uh, well, the whole book um, is really anchored by the wonderful illustrations by the artist Inyaki. He's in Spain right now watching us, and uh, he's a designer, and so he went through all these TV shows, uh, created the architectural layouts of the show, so we can see uh, sort of behind the scenes, behind the screens, as the title says, um, just to see uh, the history of the television shows, how he could co correct them to make them look more realistic. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, instead of it being exactly what the, the show might have shown you, what it would be like in real life. That's oh, what he wanted cool. To do. Yeah. Ah, and do we learn anything in particular about the shows as we go through this? I mean, yes. yeah, what, like, what did you learn about I Love Lucy? Well, I Love Lucy, um, really I learned a lot more about the historical context. Uh, Lucy was a trailblazer. She was uh, running a studio uh, as a female in the early... Uh, era of Hollywood um, and also um, just the show itself it all started because uh, you know she had a radio show they wanted to turn it into a TV show and uh, she said I'm not gonna do this show without my husband Desi Arnaz and they said well he's Cuban you're a redhead that doesn't work in America and she said well no show unless you let us do it there so you go they wow. did it. yeah all right the floor plan of friends a lot of this uh, generation is familiar with this the apartment um, so he's just looking at the bit he's watching the show yep. and and physically creating what he thinks is the floor plan yeah and Yaki watches hours and hours of television screenshots he, he watches them over and over again and then what I did is I watched them over and over again and tried to find as many details and Easter eggs as I could um, apartment numbers were changing props uh, and things were changing what uh, are some like things that you caught that that people might not have been aware of um, well, one of my favorite things about friends in particular is sort of the iconic uh, picture frame that's around the peephole the gold yeah. picture frame that was just a picture frame they wanted to have on set and someone dropped it and it broke and they said why don't you just put it on the people for now and it just stuck <laughs> and everyone Interesting. Loved it. Oh, cool. yeah. all right let's look at uh, Frasier is our next one yeah, Frasier is one of the most iconic uh, sets, I think, in my opinion. It's just so beautiful. Uh, it's a great uh, view of Seattle, even though it wasn't filmed in Seattle. Um, but just uh, just his sort of high-end sensibilities. There's a Coco Chanel couch that they spent $15,000 on and, and uh, covered it in 24 yards of Italian suede. Uh, and then Martin's chair, his father's chair. They couldn't find one ugly enough, so they had to create it from scratch. Oh, wow. really? That's yeah. interesting. Now, I learned that uh, the, the, callers, the, the callers were actually celebrity voices. Yes, yeah, so every caller, uh, for the most part, on Frasier was a celebrity guest. So Eddie Van Halen, Carrie Fisher, Stephen King, <laughs> Kevin Bacon, the list goes on and on, yeah. Just pretending to be some average schlub. Yeah, it was just like a nice little <laughs> Easter egg for yeah. the writers and just for the celebrities to kind of do something where they're not, you know, the center stage. So yeah, that's yeah. funny. All right, how about The Office? Let's look at that floor plan. So The Office uh, is a really fun one because that was the first show really in the early 2000s that had a sort of a drab uh, cinematography style. It used a cinema verite aesthetic. Um, they actually got a DP from Survivor to do all the camera work to give it that uh, non-traditional uh, camera look. And um, the office in there, uh, the address is actually Slough Avenue, which is um, the original setting of the original office, Slough, mm. England. So yeah. that's what they named it as sort of an Easter egg and in that show. I did not know this, but Phyllis mm -hmm. in this show yep. was not really an actress. No, so originally she was a St. Louis Cardinals cheerleader, got into casting, was a casting associate, and she did all the line readings with all the actors, and they just loved her so much they wrote the role for her in the pilot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're kidding yeah. me. Yeah. All right. How about, and then like Seinfeld, everyone's familiar with that yep. iconic apartment there. Um, we're looking at some generic stuff, Sesame Street, but well, why don't we start with, oh, what we're just scrolling through. Uh, any uh, any nuggets about Seinfeld? and Because everyone knows yeah. that's it. Well, Seinfeld, yeah, that's my favorite. Um, so the address on the show is 129 West 81st Street, which is where Jerry Seinfeld actually lived when he did stand up. So if you go there now, you won't see the exterior because the exterior was filmed in LA. Uh, but if you go to his real address, he actually lives like four blocks away from there by Central Park. Um, but the most interesting thing about Seinfeld was uh, what Inyaki corrected is on the show, you'll see the hallway is always straight next to Jerry's apartment, but in reality, it would cut right through his kitchen, so it would never exist. So Inyaki fixes ah. it on his floor plan to make it a real apartment. 
Well, and that, I, mean, I yeah. don't think we have the Brady Bunch, but that's one I always wondered about, you know, yeah. because you're watching these things and it's so two-dimensional and it doesn't really line up with the exterior of the house at all. No, you're, you're exactly right. So the Brady Bunch, uh, the exterior was filmed in North Hollywood, uh, and if it was how the house would look on TV, it would have a second edition. Yeah. And that's what they did on HGTV when yeah. uh, they had the whole reunion, a very Brady reunion, and um, they corrected the house, made it a two-level edition, and they beat out Lance Bass because he wanted that house and he lost to them, so wow. to HGTV. Yeah. <laughs> And that's fabulous. And what, real quick, let's do the Gilmore Girls, because that's oh, yeah. one you can visit. Yes, you can visit that uh, at the Warner Brothers back lot. Uh, it's called Anytown USA. Uh, it's a favorite of my wife's. Uh, we uh, we went there. That's uh, it, huh? Yeah, that's it. And uh, what's great about that is, yeah, the whole set's on the back lot. Um, Lorelei's house actually is connected to Suki's house. So Suki's house is right behind Lorelei's just for the ease of filming for production. Uh, and um, yeah, it's just a, a wonderful set, and it's based uh, basically on Washington Depot in Connecticut. That was the town that inspired Amy Sherman Palladino to create the show. It's so cool. The book is yeah. behind the scenes, and Neil is going to be speaking at the North Riverside Library on October 15th and at Brookfield Public Library on November 6th. You can check him out on social media and check out the work of the book's illustrator on his socials as well. There is his handle on Instagram. Thanks so much for being here, Thank Neil. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for having me. I'll see you on sure. TV.